for a table of values, what we're looking for, you want to look for repeat inputs. So we look, we have 3, 4, 9, 12, negative 4, 3. And these 3's correspond to different outputs. So if we were to plug 3 into our black box function, we get two different outputs, meaning this is not a function. But let's look at the next table. We get, again, 3, 4, 9, 12, negative 4, 3. So we have repeat inputs. But 3 is always matched with 12, meaning we have a single ordered pair of 3, 12. So yes, this is a function. And then in our last table, we have 3, 4, 9, 12, negative 4, negative 6, negative 15. Since there are no repeat inputs, we assume that, yes, this is a function. OK, so just a quick recap. With graphing, you use the vertical line test. If the line crosses your graph in two or more points, it's not a function. If it only ever crosses once, it is a function. With tables, we look for repeat inputs. If those inputs are paired with a different output, then it is not a function. Otherwise, it is. And lastly, we can look at equation form. What you want to look for here is a y variable raised to a power greater than 1. Or you can also look for plus minus signs, meaning there are two possible solutions. So in our first equation, y squared equals x. We have y squared, meaning that y will equal plus or minus the square root of x. So this is not a function. In our next one, we have y to the first power equals x cubed plus 5x squared minus 20. This is a function. And then lastly, we have y equals plus or minus x plus 5. Because we have the plus or minus, there are two possible solutions, so this is not a function. Make sure you understand the definition of function before moving on to the next topic of mapping. With functions, we say that we map a function from one set of numbers, which is our domain, to another set of numbers, which is our codomain. So we can map function f from a to b. And what this means is that a is made up of a set of numbers. For example, they could be the real numbers. And this would be our domain. These real numbers get paired with numbers from our codomain, which could also be the real numbers. It doesn't necessarily have to be, though. But the point is, every value in our domain will be paired with a value that is in our codomain. An important note to make here is that the codomain is not synonymous with the range though they may sometimes be equal. And the easiest way to show these is, again, just to dive into an example and start getting you familiar with the terminology. So we have a couple of examples to look at. And in each one, I want you to determine the domain, the codomain, and the range. And it might help to graph these functions. And you can graph them in your calculator or graph them at geogebra.org is a wonderful website to use.